This episode of In an Instant is powered by Wasabi. Get 15% off with promo code INSTANT. On this week's episode of In an Instant, I come to you from an Airstream in Northern California where I have just spent the last few days in San Francisco where I shot a lot of different formats, had a lot of fun, but one of the things that I really clung on to was sprocket photography and that's what we're gonna talk about in this week's episode as we dodge the rain by the redwoods. There's several ways to accomplish sprocket photography which essentially means covering the entire emulsion of a 35 millimeter strip so that you can see the sprockets and an image covers that. And there's a bunch of ways to do this. Lomography currently produces several cameras we're gonna be using in this episode including the Sprocket Rocket, which I never leave home without, and even your favorite medium format camera like the RB67, which we're gonna be doing some crazy sprocket shots with. We're gonna get into all that and more on this extra wide episode of In an Instant. Let's do it. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. So after spending a bunch of days in San Francisco, I wanted to get some solitude from all the hustle and bustle of the big city. And uh, because I'm a glutton for punishment, I got in my car and drove six hours north to Redwoods National Park, which is where I'm coming to you from right now, just outside the park in this beautiful Airstream. And uh, one of the first cameras I wanna talk about today is the aforementioned Sprocket Rocket by Lomography. This is one of my favorite cameras that I own, certainly my favorite Lomography camera. It's light, it's extremely easy to use, and it's built to accomplish this really cool sprocket effect. Essentially, it takes the equivalent of two frames of 35 millimeter stretched across the plane of the back of the camera, and uh, it takes 18 shots per roll, which is quite a few. There's minimal settings on it. I carry it around with me everywhere. I've taken this thing with me to Massachusetts, to SF, I've shot Delta 3200 speed film in Times Square with it. I've shot with it at an arena football game that I was shooting and I was like, ah, let me do some fun shots. It's just something that I always have in my bag. It's a conversation piece. It's a great camera. And uh, I got the bite uh, last summer when I went to Cape Cod. Sonny D, who you've seen wield this in a prior episode, had this specific camera actually. And we were like, let's burn a roll. Let's put Portrait 400 in here and just like see what happens. And the results when I was scanning them just blew me away. I was like, whoa, I need to get me one of these. And uh, Sonny eventually matriculated it down into my hands and he has a second teal one now. The reason why it's not worth asking. But this is a very simple device. It essentially has only a couple of settings. It has normal mode, which just fires the fixed shutter speed. It has bulb mode, which you can keep the shutter open for longer exposures. It has uh, two focusing distances, 0.6 to one meter. That's a really cool option for close up portraits on the sprockets. And then you've got your one meter to infinity. It has sunny and cloudy. So cloudy is approximately F11 and sunny is around F16. So you can kind of shoot with this camera manually. I believe the fixed shutter speed is one one hundredth of a second. So you can meter with this. I've shot a lot of different kinds of film inside it just to like see what the results would be. I even shot 200 speed expired slide film in it once just to see if I could. And, uh, and I was able to pretty much get it. I mean, these shots were under exposed, but you know, what are you gonna do? They recommend to load 400 speed film in this camera, but I've been recently rolling with 800 because I do get some underexposure with this. You know, these cameras are simple to the point of them having some inconsistencies. Everyone's sprocket rocket will be different. They're kind of like Holgas in that way. So you will sort of meld with your sprocket rocket if you do get one and sort of understand its intricacies. The lenses do slightly defer. I have a red copy that Lomography provided me that had a different fall off on the edges. This is a very wide lens at 30 millimeters. I think 106 degrees of field of view, it's absolutely ridiculous. So every lens looks slightly different at the edges, you know, whether it's sharp across the frame or not. This one is blessed and has just given me incredible results in my opinion. This is just such a fun creative tool. It makes you think a little bit differently. It always turns heads. People always freak out when they see this in classic Lomography fashion. It is modeled after a classic camera and it came in all variety of colors. This is the teal one. I got the red one, like I said. There are a bunch of different options. You can taste the rainbow with these dang things. Just slinging this around the neck, I mean, I can be carrying a dump truck load of cameras and this thing will not put me out. It's just slung around the neck, good to go. Sort of. So this was sort of my gateway drug into sprocket photography and it led me to wanna try a couple more things and those are the other cameras that we're gonna be using in this video. 
The next one up is the RB67, which is a very, very different kind of sprocket shooter. And I'll show you how to use that now. So I just pulled over on the side of the road as the Pacific Ocean continues crashing at my back to talk a little bit about shooting sprocket photography on a medium format camera like the RB67. Essentially what you're doing is loading 35 millimeter film into the camera's traditional medium format back using 3D printed adapters that are compatible with 35 millimeter film that lets you essentially drag the 35 millimeter film across the film plane, allowing you to uh, expose that film with this camera, which is incredible because you get amazing results. I mean, if the Sprocket Rocket is your gateway drug and you have one of these things, then, I mean, it's a, such a fun way to shoot with it. I hadn't done that until recently. I went out with Joe and Michelle and I had loaded some Cinestill 800T into this thing and I was blown away by the results. We had such a fun time shooting like this. And uh, there's something kind of magical about shooting Cinestill in it. The film is a cinema film and the wide aspect ratio you're getting almost looks anamorphic, which is of course something that you see often in filmmaking. And it was really fun to shoot with it like that. It just feels like a natural match. Getting up really close with it, those close-up shots really blew me away. And uh, it was a bit of an experiment. I wasn't quite sure how the film advance would work, uh, but it turns out with the RB, uh, you can kind of trick the camera into advancing the film properly. You don't have to do anything different really. So I was really happy with that. I didn't get any overlapping images or anything. And it immediately hit my eye as like, wow, okay, I gotta do this more. So when we came out here to San Francisco for Policon, uh, I brought the camera back out, loaded Cinestill back in here, and we had an insane time at night shooting with it uh, with a bunch of different photographers. Of course, multiple people brought external lighting, so we were shooting at night, but I haven't seen the results yet, but I imagine they're gonna be pretty cool. And now that I've driven up here five hours north, of course, the weather took a dive, and it has not been very sunny out here, which I think is par for the course. Uh, but on a hazy day like this, I loaded some Ektachrome in here to get some extra punch on these colors. Basically, the only color even visible anywhere around here in the Redwoods is the color green, and I think that Ektachrome is gonna punch those up really nice. I did attempt to load Polapan in this camera, and I wanted to shoot some Polaroid 35 millimeter film in it. I'm very curious to see if Polapan actually has emulsion where the sprockets are. I'm not really sure that it does, but it would still give me panoramic Polaroid 35 millimeter film, which I think would be really cool. So hopefully I have some results to show you on screen of that little experiment. But yeah, 6.7 is a really nice format for this. I did try loading it into my Hassi, uh, which is 6.6 of course, um, but actually the spools didn't fit in there. So I'm sure every spool is kind of different. You can find them on Etsy or eBay. They're really cheap. And so if you already have a body this expensive, it's a cheap way to do panoramic photography. You just gotta spend a couple bucks and you're good to go. So I'm gonna plunge back into the park and shoot a little bit more on this bad boy. I am currently here on Howland Hills Road in, uh, in the park and I just wanted to take a second to stop down and appreciate this. I'm speaking in a lower voice because I'm among the trees now and I don't need to be yelling. Um, this is like a spiritual experience. I mean, you hear about going and seeing these redwoods, these ancient trees, these things that predate everything that we know in our daily lives and that you feel in touch with something special. And I, of course, am a huge fan of nature. So um, I didn't know what to expect, but when I first entered the park yesterday, it was pouring rain and I walked in there and I just, it was unbelievable. I was, I was blown away. Um, I touched a tree and I felt something different. Um, <laughs> and so um, it's, it's a beautiful escape, I would say, from our very, very noisy daily lives, especially living in New York, living in a metropolitan area anywhere, um, getting the opportunity to come out here and feel this calm um, cannot be understated. If you have access to a car and can drive out into the wild and you haven't done that in some time, I recommend it because it's a recharge. It's amazing. It just brings your blood pressure down and in a healthy way. Um, so I'm just going to keep, keep driving around this road. This road is, uh, literally winds through the trees. It's a very narrow dirt road and just, I'm just going to enjoy, take some pictures. Where else would I rather be? The next camera we're gonna be talking about is one of the strangest panoramic cameras ever made in modern history. This 
is the Lomography Spinner 360 camera. Yes, this takes a 360 degree picture across the film plane. And why is it called the spinner? That's how it takes the picture. It essentially scans the film as it rotates around and exposes it that way. It's one of the craziest things I've ever used. Um, like many Lomography cameras, it has two settings, sunny and cloudy. Um, and uh, it's been just fun to have this around and just do this a bunch, do it vertically, uh, just try a bunch of things with it. The first two rolls I shot with this, I've been taking every photo like this. And if you do that, your, your face is gonna be in the photo, in every single photo. And at the end of the second roll, I was like, guys, how do I take a photo with this that isn't also an, a weird selfie? And they're like, dude, just hold it over your head. And then you won't be in the picture. So that made me feel extremely stupid. Um, <laughs> so there's gonna be a lot of weird pictures of my face in this roll, but uh, I'm excited to try to use this here in the Redwoods, in the calm. Not sure if there's really enough light out here to really make anything cool with this right now, but I'm gonna try it anyway. We'll see what happens. We're just having fun, and we're taking panoramics to the extreme with this thing, and uh, can't wait to pop off. Well, Sprocketeers, I hope you enjoyed this extra wide version of In An Instant. It was certainly so fun to be popping around and shooting these bad boys. There's certainly many other methods you can use. Uh, please drop a comment in the description if you've got a sprocket shooter of your own uh, that you'd like to share. Uh, there's a lot of cool medium format cameras that can do this with. Obviously, you don't need an RB67. Uh, you can do this with any myriad of cameras, and I just think it's a fun way to shoot 35 millimeter film with some extra spice. And thank you for watching In An Instant. Go ahead and demolish that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more guides, reviews, breakdowns, and all things instant. Bye.